Let's work on the recording. What's up, fragrance family? We're going to let me see what's going on here. Oh, I actually have to flip my phone. All right, we're gonna do a little unboxing video. Let's see. Whatever. We'll just do it like this. Bam. All right, we're gonna do a little unboxing, guys. Figured I'd do it on camera since I'm not going to you know actually post it. I got like a big ass box. Figured I'd share this moment. It's gonna be like little unboxings and stuff. Some clones, some niche brands, all that stuff. So I'm not really gonna wait since they are recorded. It's whatever. Let's see. We'll get it started. Okay. Um holy fudge. This is a box I got in today. Uh, I got my fragrance from Joma Shop. And let's see. Let's go through the box. I do want to wait for some people to come in, but whatever. We'll just get it started. So this big ass box is full of a bunch of goodies. I'm going to put the box aside and we'll just go through some of them together. Let's go. Just first impressions. All right. So first one, let's start with this. This is the first one I'm going to start with. It's because there's a lot of talk around it lately. And that's Al Haramein Deep Tour Noir. The reason why there's a lot of talk about this specific fragrance is because it's supposed to be a Parfums de Marley Leighton clone. I um, <clears throat> was very interested in picking it up just to see how close it really is. I have Leighton, but I was really curious to see what it smells like. So I wasn't like crazy about picking it up for any reason. Not because I didn't have it, but just to see. All right, so let me see if I can pull up notes while I pull this up. Detour Noir, let's see. Yep, yeah. okay, cool, they have it. We'll do a little comparison real quick, Fragrantica. So we got Detour Noir and then we'll do Leighton Parfums de Marley. Okay, cool. So I'm gonna have them up side by side. And let's see, how do they compare? And I'll let you guys know if I think it's worth it or not. I actually wore it today. Um, I had it on for the gym. Performance is definitely amazing. Uh, come on, take here, here. Okay. Look. All right, so let's do this on a tester strip real quick. I know exactly what um, Parfums of Marley Layton smells like. I've worn Layton a lot. I love it. So here we go. Kind of looks like an Armoff atomizer. Guys, these bottles are weird looking, but who cares? It's the juice. It's one of those tacky ass bottles. Look at that. It's weird, but very cheap cap, man. This is like straight up plastic, but whatever. Performance, guys, on this one, the Al Haramein Detour Noir. Make sure you don't get the Detour. There's other Detours. I actually picked up the wrong one the first time, and I didn't realize until I was smelling. I was like, what the hell are they getting? This does get close, man. It really does. It gets very close, but just judging off of some of the notes, it's quite different based off of the notes. The, the biggest difference I found in it is the Cypress. It has a lot more of a green um, pungency compared to Leighton. But for the most part, it's really damn close. I think the heliotrope kind of throws it off just a little bit. Whereas this one uses the heliotrope, the Leighton uses more of a geranium violet blend. And the lavender. So I don't think it has lavender in here. Let's see. al Haramein. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, this has more of an almondy feel, not only because it has almond obviously in it, but there's also heliotrope kind of smells almondy as well. So when you see heliotropes, you know it's going to have some, some effect of almond, which kind of gives it a more cherry feel than uh, Leighton would. Still has that apple pie feeling with maybe some added cherry. 
yeah, so honestly, it's not bad. Not bad of a pickup. If you can find this for sub $40 and you don't have Leighton, yeah, hell yeah. I mean, solid, solid. So far, so good. This is the only one that I actually sprayed on and tested before. Let me just double check and see if this is actually live right now. I want to make sure that I'm not wasting my thing. Yeah, we are live. Cool. All right. So that was the first one. Al Haramin. Next fragrance. Okay, so this is another clone that's not really talked about too much. It's from Jenny Glow. Jenny Glow. I knew about the Jenny Glow from a long time ago. I just never really got my hands any of on any of them. And if you can't already tell, it's a clone of Joe Malone. This one is called Myrrh and Bean. So this is supposed to obviously be a clone of Myrrh and Tonka. To be honest with you guys, I'm not crazy about um I'm not crazy about what's it called? Uh, Joe Malone house. Only because, guys, Joe Malone is very, in my opinion, doesn't last that long. So I figured, you know what? What the hell? Who cares? I'm never going to buy Myrn Tonka from Joe Malone. Let me pick up Jenny Glow. Let's see. Is it actually close or not? So this first impressions, let's get it. I never do first impressions on YouTube. I mean, technically, sometimes I do, but it's not real first impressions because once I open the wrappers, which I generally do before the video just because of wants to sit here and hear all that. Um, obviously, I'm going to spray it, man. And if you have the self-control to spray it, then... Hey, what's up, David? We just covered this uh, uh, Leighton clone. Uh, El Haramein Detour Noir. Really, really good, man. About 85% clo- 80% close. So, sub $40, it's worth it. Parfums de Marley Leighton. Um, the next one is this Jenny Glow. Murin Bean, it's the Joe Malone Murin Tonka. That's the only one that I honestly enjoy. It's very unisex as well. Let's see how this one goes. We're going through a package I actually just received today. Some niche, some clones, and a Latafa fragrance as well. All right, let's see. Fingers crossed, man. I'm not expecting much with this. Oh, shit. It's actually really freaking close. really close holy smokes i can't speak for yeah i definitely can't speak for the um performance on it but damn so far 90 percent, and that's jenny glow jenny glow has a lot more offerings for the joe malone clones as well so you'll find them on fragrancebuy.ca i think it was like 16 bucks man the fact that it even opened up this close is worth the 16 dollars. so next fragrance let's go all right, I got this big ass box here, guys. So bear with me. We're going to go through it. Oh, God. Okay. The next one, Nishane Ani. So just so I'm not talking out of my hole here, I'm going to just pull it up just to kind of give some, some background. Yeah, definitely is. What's up, Vargas? How you doing, buddy? All right, so this is supposed to be ginger, bergamot, whatever, all that stuff. Kind of similarities to, let's see, let's see, what does it get compared to? I think it's Electimus now. Wow, okay. And I think this is the Electimus Imperium. So they're all kind of Creed Aventus type of influenced fragrances. So they say, let's see. So... This is the first one I actually own. I have got my nose on Nishane plenty of times, man, but I just never really, I don't know. I never was crazy about it, but Ani, last time I smelled it, I remember saying, okay, cool. Maybe maybe that'll be the first pickup. So, okay, so let's actually look at the presentation together, guys. I don't know what the hell I'm doing. So the sleeve actually just pulled off. And then after that, we have this here, Nishane. And there's a tassel on the side. Let's pull it out, see what happens. Okay, so there's another uh, envelope. Cool. So let's see what the hell the envelope's about. Nishane Ani. It's a portrait? Whatever. This is. It's like a postcard. So I guess it's a postcard you can use to send someone if they even know what Nishane is. Okay, let's put this aside. And then the presentation is actually really, really nice. So it's sitting in a like velvet cutout, not a velvet cutout, but this is like, uh, it's just a fabric with some cardboard underneath. Cool. And then there we go. 
This is the big boy. I got the 100 mil. And let's let's give it a spritz. Okay, so before I do that, so I should smell ginger, bergamot, pink pepper, and green notes in the opening. The mid cardamom, black currant, and Turkish rose. I have a little bit of a fan kind of blowing at me to speed up these dry downs, guys. I'm cheating a little bit, but whatever. And then vanilla, benzoin, sandalwood, cedar, patchouli, musk, and ambergris. On paper, that sounds amazing, but I don't want to spray it on the other boxes, so. It's really good. It's really good. The rose hit me actually really early. The rose and the cardamom. Rose, cardamom, ginger, pink pepper. That's what I got right off the top. Wow, this is actually surprisingly good. And that fan is helping it dry down for sure because now I'm already picking up some vanilla and benzoin. That's it. I'm not picking up anything else. I don't want to like wait here and sit here and let you guys just watch me freaking sniff these strips. So, so far, so good. Rose, cardamom, ginger, vanilla, benzoin. That's what I got in the beginning. Uh, is it resembling? To, let me see. Creed Aventus? No, not really. No, man. This is so much sweeter. Honestly, this is sexier. Because you lose that abrasiveness of that pineapple with the birch. Very sexy. Overall, yeah, I'm actually really excited to wear this one. Cool. I'm glad I picked it up. Next, fragrance. I think I got it at a decent deal. I picked it up for $170, $169.99 on Joma Shop, jomashop.com. They've been, honestly, they've been killing it with their deals. And I don't think it's going to last long just because Joma Shop came into the scene relatively recently. So if you guys want to pick up fragrances from Joma, it would, now would be the time because I've seen it all the time. Some of these fragrance brands, they start getting big and they always have like the lowest of the low. They suck you in and they get you used to buying from their websites and that's it. They cut it. Guys, if I'm not responding to your comments, I promise I'm not ignoring. It's just for whatever reason, it's not loading up on my phone. So I have to like constantly refresh the live session on my laptop. And even then, I noticed that yesterday when I was watching my live after it, the fact, I noticed I missed a lot of comments, but I didn't see them. So, okay, next up, I was actually very excited to have gotten this. And this is from Argos. This came separately. Obviously, it didn't come from Joma Shop. Argos Adonis Awakens, my number one from the house. I started with Triumph of Bacchus, and then I uh, picked up Diné as well. I picked those up in the small portions, and honestly, I'm glad I did. And I love that they sent me samples as well. Um, so I got samples for days. I have some big plans coming for that 1,000-sub uh, video giveaway. I'm going to pick three winners for that one. And a lot of those samples are going to go out to them. I don't need freaking samples. I got plenty of these bottles, enough to last probably five lifetimes. But Adonis Awakens is so fucking sexy, guys. Excuse my language, but it is what it is. One of the sexiest fragrances I have. So I'm going to say, I'm going to compare it to something that many people won't. Uh, Mont Blanc Individuel. But hear me out. It's like 20% that. It's that same raspberry feel, the fabric softener. But honestly, it's 10 times better than that. 10 times sexier. It's modern. It's way more modern. That's such a dated fragrance. And then you have that rose in here as well. And it's so sexy, so sweet. Guys, I walked into the post office today and I shit you not, right before I walked in, this is the first time I even opened the box. I sprayed it on like one, two, three, walked in. The dude came out from the back and he was like, what the hell are you wearing? I was like, you can smell me, dude? He's like, I honestly came out from behind the counter to come out here and ask you. I was like, damn. And this old lady, she was probably like 70 years old behind the counter. She's like, yeah, you smell really nice. And I was like, well, thank you. So I went and told him and he was like, oh, okay, blah, blah, blah. So I put him on the whole, you know, uh, YouTube and all that stuff. And he bought one right in front of me. So he used the discount code and everything. So it's so sexy, but it has, it opens up more of like a raspberry cotton candy, masculine, well, unisex, but masculine enough or leaning more, how do I word this? Leaning enough towards a masculine side for me to like actually wear it. So freaking amazing Adonis Awakens. And when I say rose, dude, it's not like your normal rose fragrance. When you spray it, you're not going to smell like rose petals or anything like that. No, it's, it's not your typical rose. And I, I would honestly, normally I'd be like, oh, you have to like rose to like this fragrance. No, you don't even have to like rose to like this fragrance. It's really good. Oh my God. Out the atomizer, raspberry cotton candy. It's so damn good. And it's just, yeah, the compliments galore. 
seriously. I on it, I bought this one in the uh, 100 ml. The other two I bought, uh, what's it called, in the 1.7. And just look at these bottles, man. Seriously, look at these bottles. And then you got the cubic zirconium, the studs right there and there. And then you have that art thing, whatever. And then the Argos on top. Some of the sexiest bottles I've ever seen, honestly. But yeah, so it's really good. You got the notes of bergamot, grapefruit, pink pepper. And then you have that rose in the mid with the jasmine, vanilla, and raspberry. Vanilla and raspberry is where this fragrance shines. And then you have sandalwood, which makes it so damn creamy. And the rose absolute is different from what you're used to. I think that's why it's not like your typical rose. It's a rose absolute. It's so concentrated. It's juicy. It's so damn good. Next, let's go. So that was Adonis Awakens, number one fragrance from um, Argos. Number two fragrance, Triumph of Bacchus. And that opens up like Parfums de Marly Herod, and it dries down like Carlisle. That's the easiest way to describe that. So Herod in the opening, Carlisle in the dry down. But it's not as dense as Carlisle. It's a little bit more wearable. It's a brighter Carlisle than um, whatever it's called, whatever. Uh, this is another sample that I got from Argos. I wasn't too crazy about it, but the only thing that really interested me in it was I was hoping, I was really hoping that this would be a good one because of the iris concrete. Anytime I see iris, I'm like, yeah, Dior Homme. But unfortunately, this didn't do it for me. But if I had to place something at a number four, this would probably be it. Denae is a really good fragrance, even though it's placed at number three. It's the most, most versatile of all of them. And honestly... It's a good fragrance. This is a good fragrance, but it just does, it's nothing crazy, man. If you're going to spend like 170 bucks or $200, you don't need this one. Danae is really good. It's a nice freshie. It dries down with a little bit more greenness, kind of Invictus Aqua, but miles above that, miles above it. Just the same vibe in the opening only, and then it starts to change into something definitely niche. Very, very easy to tell. And it's unique. All three of those fragrances are unique, except for Triumph of Bacchus. I've smelled something like that before. That's how I generally felt. I was like, oh, okay, cool. I'm glad I got this in the 1.7 because I have other fragrances that I probably reach for before I reach for this. So yeah, uh, Brevito Della Casia, nothing crazy. Juniper, May Absolute, Oil of Flove, Tonka Bean Absolute, Leather, Birch, Amber. It's not even worth talking about really, honestly. If you guys want to see more about that, maybe somebody else purchased the full bottle. But as far as me, nah, I'm good. So next one is called Bruges. I haven't really seen much of this on anywhere, and it's by Perlador. And this fragrance is, from what I understood, was a expression of Carlisle. And honestly, Carlisle is really good. It's, it's good. I mean, I feel like it's got hyped a lot. But I figured, I don't know, what the hell? Let me pick it up. It was like 50 bucks or 60 bucks from fragrancebuy.ca. And I'm not disappointed. This is another one that I sprayed, tested right before I made the video, and I'm not disappointed. The depth and character in this fragrance is honestly really damn good. It's it, Even if it's not like 100% clone, the, fa the quality of the juice is amazing. So if you wanted to go with this instead of Carlisle because of budget, if you have a budget or whatever, still 100% worth it. 100%. It's niche quality at designer prices, less than designer prices, to be honest. So I'm just opening up both Carlisle and Bruges. And let's see, Carlisle. So, so far with Bruges, we have sage and basil at the top, violet and incense in the mid, and then we got leather, gray musk, and agarwood. So completely different from Carlisle's breakdown, really. Let me just double check. Yeah, it does get comparisons to Carlisle. And honestly, like even me, when I smelt it, it does smell like Carlisle. It's, it's truth, so... Let's see. Let me, oh, you know, see if we pick up some of these fragrance notes. And that atomizer is crazy good. Look at that. It's pressurized and it just pumps. Yeah. I mean, I don't even have to look at the notes to see the similarity. It has that similar Parfums de Marley DNA as well. What's up, Ray Ray? How you doing, buddy? Hopefully you're doing well. Thanks for tuning in, man. So, yeah. Um, we were just talking about Bruges. So, there are some differences. Slight differences. It's not as resinous as Carlisle is. Carlisle maintains a very deep, dense uh, DNA. This is probably a little bit more wearable, and I think I can definitely tell that this is missing the rose that Carlisle has, but I'm not going to keep sniffing it on cam. 
I'm going to, all of these are going to be in an actual review after I actually wear them, guys. But yeah, very close to Carlisle. If you wanted to pick it up prior to the reviews, I still think this one is, is one that's worth it. Uh, like I said, I think it was about 50 at most $60 on fragrancebuy.ca. So let's see. I'm doing great, man. Yeah, I'm glad you could be here again, man. I plan on doing a lot more lives. I'm actually getting ready to make a video right now for YouTube because I did that 33 fragrances on the group, but I, I got to share it with the YouTube as well. So, all right, next fragrance I got in this big ass box. Let's see. Okay, so this one is called Kismet. Kismet for him by uh, uh, Alhambra, Mason Alhambra. Mason Alhambra is a sub company of La Fafa. I normally don't buy from Mason Alhambra. I'm not going to lie. It's just not my um, clone house. But for some reason, I think it was very cheap. It was like 25 or 26 bucks. And I saw it on Fragrance Buy. I was like, you know what? What the hell? Let me pick it up because of the presentation. So when you open this bad boy up, I mean, it's hard not to get this. And it's such a nice bottle. And the quality of the, the bottle as well is just crazy. Guys, I didn't even know what this was a clone of until I actually picked it up. And it's a clone of YSL Tuxedo. I'm at the point now where I have two fragrances that are cloning Tuxedo. I'm not buying Tuxedo, period. I was going to buy it as of yesterday until this came in today. And I'll tell you what, it does such a good job at cloning Tuxedo. Um, so if you have, if you don't have Tuxedo, but you have mustache, then you know what I'm talking about. But this is higher quality than mustache. It's really good. But I will say the Dual Brands version has more density to it. This is not as dense, but makes it more wearable because of the fact. So damn good. Tuxedo, for sure. Let's see if Fragrantica has this listed at all, because I know not all of these fragrances, especially from Mason Alhambra, is on um, Mason Alhambra. Yeah, see, they don't really cover Mason Alhambra, probably because it's a strictly clone house. So whatever, I don't, I don't blame them. You know, a lot of people are... Oh, okay, cool. Let's see. Okay, sorry, guys. Give me just one second. Let me refresh the screen here. I want to make sure that we're all good. We're good. Okay, cool. So, yeah, that was Kismet. So, sub $30 before it gets on the radar. I don't know if anybody's going to hype this fragrance up, honestly, but I've been noticing that it's been really really hard to find in comparison to some of these other fragrances. So usually that's kind of the trend that they go in. So if you like mustache or if you like tuxedo, pick up Kismet before it's gone, period. Uh, next fragrance, um, let's see. I haven't opened this one yet. And this is called Nafis al Sharf, which is spelled Nafayas al Sharf. So there you go. But it's called Nafis al Sharf in Arabic. So let's see. Let's fragrance to cut this bad boy up real quick. It's actually pretty sad that I don't even look into them, really. Nafis al Sharaf. I don't. Not on Fragrantica. Let's see. Nafis. And, and this is by Rosasi. So, you know, I trust. I honestly trust their house. Oh, I, no. This is Sharaf for Por Om. So, Sharaf, Sharaf Por Om is on Fragrantica, but this is different. This is Nafis al Sharaf. So, this is like the breath of. Sharaf or Sharaf or however you guys pronounce it. I don't know how they pronounce it, but <laughs> same thing. Okay, so I found the notes. The notes are aldehydes, fruity accord, grapefruit, pepper, lily of the valley, jasmine, ylang ylang, and then vanilla, musk, and okay, no, I don't need this. All right, and tonka beans and sandalwood. So what this looks like is it says, wear this unique signature scent. Rich, woody, leathery accord infused with mystical rose, exotic orchid, and ylang ylang. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, cool. And then a floral cord gives this fragrance irresistible energy and spirit. And this is from the actual brand themselves. Let's see, does it give me any irresistible energy and spirit? We're about to find out. We about to find out, let's see. All right. Okay, so, ooh. Kind of a cheap looking bottle. Well, it's glass. For a second, it felt like plastic. It's kind of light. Uh, the cap is plastic. Who cares? Take a look at the bottle. It's actually a nice bottle. It screams summer. Summer bottle for sure. All right, let's see. 
blah, blah, blah. Let's get to the more important stuff. So aldehydes, fruity accord, grapefruit, and pepper is what I should smell. Let's see. Wow. Wow, I'm surprised. Okay, this is definitely a summertime fragrance, but it's different. Even though Lily of the Valley is in the middle, guys, Lily of the Valley is like a fragrance note that kind of reminds you of just like bar of soap. So I get the bar of soap right in the beginning. And pepper and grapefruit. Oh, God, I hate when they overdo the Lily of the Valley. See, this started out fantastic, and now it's just amplifying the Lily. It's just soapy, getting really soapy. Still clean, still very clean fragrance. I just don't care about soapy fragrances. But I'd imagine that it'll dry down even more. And then the jasmine and ylang ylang. I didn't get any fruity accords, man. I hardly got any grapefruit, too. It was just straight up lily of the valley, slap in the face. And some pepper. And jasmine. Okay, I want to come back to this one. Just because I'm curious. I don't want to, like, completely, you know, shit on them. So, we'll see. We'll see. So far, it's just straight up bar of soap. So... It is what it is. This is another fragrance. I honestly don't remember what this is even called. Let's see. It's called Ebian by Rosasi. So Ebian, A-B-Y-A-N. These are from, this is from Joma Shop, I believe. Let's see if we can get Rosasi, Ebian. If we can get some fragrance notes, that would be cool while I open this up. Yep, we got some fragrance notes. So it's classified as citrus. Woody, Woody Citrus. Okay, cool. Now I see why I would have picked this up because it has some of my favorite favorite notes like cardamom, grapefruit, mandarin orange, cinnamon, and then we got apple rose, and then base of leather, musk, and woody. This actually sounds good. Wow, okay. You open the box and the cap's already gone. Let's see. Yeah, I don't care. You can't expect too much with these. What the hell? Okay, you, you can expect the cap to close at least, but... Okay, it closes one way, only one way. So the only way you can actually close it is like, even if you don't, like you have to twist it and find the spot that it drops into. There we go. Okay, cool, whatever. You know, they're going with like an MFK style bottle. I'm not hating on it. I like, honestly, I like all these bottles. I really don't care, even the cheesy ones. But when they're cheap looking as hell, like the Detour, no. I, that's just bullshit. Like this is ugly. Super ugly. It honestly looks just cheap. And this is like way plastic. But the juice is fantastic in here. So it's cool. Whatever. Let's get back to this. So let's see what we get. So cardamom, grapefruit, mandarin, cinnamon. See if I get any of those in the opening. I don't really expect much with these some of these houses. Because like I said, sometimes you don't even know what you're actually getting in these fragrances. And sometimes fragrance code doesn't even know. Oh, definitely cardamom. Yes, this is more my speed, cool. Okay, this has definitely picked up the slack on the last fragrance. Wow, this is really good. Cardamom, rose, some apple. Barely any cinnamon, but it's there. I'm getting Lanui, uh, Lanui de Lome vibes, honestly. Smells really damn good. This is a good pickup. Fantastic blind buy. Thank God. But it is starting to change already. Like I said, I have that fan running here, so it'll dry down faster. And it's on paper. I'm loving it. I'm loving it. This is going to get some wares. Thank God, man. It made up for... Uh... I don't really have any bad buys, to be honest. So far, it's just that, that one from Rosasi, the... Holy shit, man, for the price, a bien. Damn, really good. It opened La Nuit de Lone, but it's changing. It's changing big time. And it was the cardamom, cinnamon, and rose, I think. Kind of gave that sexy, seductive, mysterious, but now it's kind of going into like apple and musk. It's good, it's really good. That's all we're gonna do it. Like I said, full reviews is for later. We're not gonna do the full reviews right now. But yeah, I mean, Abian, put this on your radar, guys. Definitely a good pickup. Honestly, really good one. This is probably the best of the cheap ones so far. But the closest as far as clones so far, Jenny Glow, Myrrh and Tonka, or Myrrh and Bean. Very underrated. Very. Okay, let's come back to this one. Let's see what's up. 
Holy shit, it just turned into an even more soapier soap. Uh, I'm really disappointed in this one. But it's okay. It's okay. It smells like a musky soap. Almost like Irish. Uh, it's just, I, uh, anytime I smell these soap, it's Irish Springs. So, that's what I'm smelling. It's alright. Not bad, not bad. It's all good. So, next thing I got was a Givenchy gift set. This one is the EDT. EDT Intense. So, I think this was the release of 2020. Let's see what we got. The gift set was uh, cheaper than actually, it was like five bucks cheaper to get the gift set than it was to get just the fragrance. Not that I care about the body wash at all. I mean, who cares? But I care about a better deal. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Let's see. Oh, God. Am I going to have to this box up right now? I might have to. Give me my God. Okay. Fudge, man. Okay, cool. Well, I can toss this away now. All right, let's see. I want to pull up the notes here. Let's do the Givenchy. Givenchy ED. You know what? Honestly, guys, I really don't like this. But I think somebody would love this if they're into clean and soapy fragrances. Giveaway worthy, maybe, maybe. Because, you know, one man's treasure is another man's, or one man's trash is another man's treasure. I, I'm a firm believer in that, honestly. I might love something that somebody absolutely hates too, so. All right, let's see. Givenchy, EDT, or Intense. Intense, gentlemen only intense. Here we go, is this it? Yeah, gentlemen only intense. No, it's not. God, okay, Givenchy, EDT, Intense. I think it's 2020 on Fragrantica. I think that's what I gotta search. Let's see, 2020. Yep, nope, that's Boise. Boise, I also have that in this haul, guys. I got like almost the entire lineup of Givenchy in this haul. It's because I love those fragrances. You like the the body? Okay, so Ray says that he likes the body wash from the bundles. I kind of hate the deodorants. Yeah, but I have an aftershave or a lotion instead. Definitely. The last one that I ever got in a deodorant, bro, was the Versace Mano Fresh, and that was years ago. That's when I learned I'll never do. They smell good. They just don't work. So, okay, gentlemen. Gentlemen. Come on, man. Where is it? Gentlemen, only intense. That should be it, but it's not. Okay, whatever. Let's just go with the flow. I'll tell you guys what I get. Or is this a 2018 Eau de Parfum? No, this is the Eau de Toilette. Oh, well. Okay, so I'm just gonna tell you guys if I like it or not. I'm not gonna talk at smoke. Let's see what's up. Okay, so you guys, at the beginning of the, my journey, I really did not like anything that wasn't, what's up, Mateo? I didn't like anything that wasn't Dior Homme and that tried to use the iris just because I was used to that DNA one specific way. Yeah, you still got a no fresh deodorant. <laughs> That's hilarious, man. <gasps> Yeah, those are years ago, man. I love Eau Fraiche, though. Guys, for the summertime, one of my favorite fragrances is Versace Man Eau Fraiche. I don't care how low level that is. This smells really damn good. So it's not only got the, um, the iris DNA that you'll find in the other gentleman fragrances, but it's got some kind of spice in there, too. And it kind of makes it, balances it out a little bit more. I felt like some of the older batches or older bottles were just so, like, pungent. It just was too much. It almost felt like it was trying to pull between like a two genre fragrances. Yes, Versace Mano Fresh is definitely a great cheapie for the summertime. It's very unique. It doesn't smell like your typical just bland, whatever, citrus, freshy. It's nice. It's citrusy. It's got some spices. It's fantastic. So let's see. Okay, now that I pulled that up, I really want to get the notes on this one but I might have to just get over it. Let me see, this is the EDT. Eau de Toilette Intense. Blah, blah, blah. Oh, here we go, I found it, hell yeah. Cause I smell some stuff. Cardamom, yes. So that's where it saves the fragrance. They definitely use some herbs and spices. And that's why this one wins, 100%. Is it because, like I said, the other ones, it like you you feel like it's like pulling too hard in two directions. 
but this, it now has a balance. And so, like I said, in the beginning of my journey, I really did not like the gentleman, uh, Givenchy. Dior Homme was definitely my go-to. I felt like this was like the, the Kmart of the Walmart. So yeah, it was just whatever. But this, this is a newer bottle. This I think released in, let's see, 2021. So last year. So I introduced that cardamom, basil, and bergamot, and then the cypress and stuff. So really damn good. Really, really good. So I hope the Givenchy lines continue to do that lipsticky iris because they're going to take it over. Like, honestly, we, uh, Dior Homme messed up by not doing it. But yesterday I tested out Dior Homme and I left the tester strip in the vehicle. And today I went and sniffed it. it. Smelled really good. Smelled really good. Just wasn't the same thing. So I think I just was hard on it in the beginning because I came to expect a certain thing from the fragrance. So that's Gentleman Givenchy EDT Intense. Next fragrance, since we're doing the Givenchy, the other one that I picked up was the Boise. You know I had to pick up the Boise. One thing I'll say about the Boise is if you're looking for an entry fragrance into the Gentleman Givenchy and you're looking for something that you know is gonna smell good and that you're gonna accept, go for the Boise. I find it to be the easiest one to wear out of all of them. It has more of like a, a designer feel for whatever reason in comparison to the other ones. And let's see the notes here. You got black pepper, geranium and coriander at the top. Yeah, so iris, cacao pod in the mid with the cedar, sandalwood, woodsy notes and patchouli. So easier notes for sure. It's not too much on the kumarin or anything like that or the uh, tonka. So it is a bit easier. No cypress that's just like really, you know, pungent or anything like that. And so, yeah, much easier, especially with the opening. The opening opens a lot more designer-like, so. But it's nothing crazy. Of the two, I like the... Uh, Eau de Toilette Intense more. This smells, still smells good. This is a little bit more versatile. So more summertime, that's like fall. It's still, yeah, fantastic fragrance. So that was EDP, uh, Eau de Parfum, the Boise. And then on the back here, you see the notes here. Oh, well, see the dang notes. What the heck was I doing? I didn't even need that. All right, oh, burning. Okay, so see what I'm saying? Like, that's crazy, man. Fragrance could, it doesn't even have it right. So. Iris, cacao, um, da, 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 da. you got black pepper, cocoa bean, what? Burning wood and sandalwood. Like, do you see any burning, it just says woodsy notes. I hate that. And then there's patchouli, where's the patchouli? I don't see any patchouli. I see santal, which is a sandalwood, black pepper, yes. Powdery noir, iris. There's nothing that says geranium in here either, or coriander. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't, honestly, I didn't even pick that up. So geranium and coriander is not even in there. Uh, cedar is not even in there either. Whatever. It's a good fragrance though, nonetheless. And then the other one I got was, I still have a, one more in the mail, I believe. If not, should be two more in there. Yeah, I still got one more in the box and then one more in the mail to kind of complete the lineup. This is the original EDT. So if I was gonna have them, I wanted to have them all. That way, yeah, you know, it's just easier for me to actually appreciate the house. And I honestly, I gained some more respect for the house and I wanted to do some comparison videos and do all that stuff. And then also the fact that this has the pair note kind of attracted me to it just because of that similar uh, note breakdown that Dior Homme Intense has. Even though Dior Homme Intense, guys, as much as I love Dior Homme Parfum, I don't really care for Dior Homme Intense. It's actually kind of headache inducing for me. So let's see what this one does. Is it better in my opinion than your Rome Intense. It doesn't have that cocoa. It's not the same. Definitely not the same. Still smells amazing. I don't know what it is. What the hell I was thinking when I smelled them once upon a time. My nose has completely changed. This smells really good. Like this out of all of these, I would consider this the safer for summer time. The EDT original, the 2017 formulation because that opening was just straight up exactly what the Fragrantica says, which was the pear, cardamom, and pineapple. You think about that combination, it's pretty fresh. And then iris, of course, is there as well. And then once it starts to warm down, which it already is, lavender, yeah, geranium, yeah. This is staying true to the note breakdown, 100%. Really damn good. Wow, surprising. Honestly, I like the EDT more than I do the Boise. The Boise is kind of leaving something to be desired. It's nothing crazy. It's just kind of mass appealing. 2017, the EDT. Smells really good. Next fragrance. This is the other one. Guys, 
I'm sorry, I actually threw away the boxes for these, but whatever. Because most of these, some of these were actually testers, 60 bucks, 70 bucks on some of them. This is the Eau de Parfum, Gentleman Givenchy. So the EDT, summertime, actually, so far between the uh, EDT Intense and the EDT Original are my favorites. I have one more. Where the hell is it? I'll get back to that. And Reserve Privé. Reserve Privé is awesome. It's also a very nice fragrance. I don't know where it is. So I have five of them so far. And then I've got the Cologne also. That's coming very soon. Very soon it should be. Okay, so first impressions for the... Let's see, which one is this one again? Eau de Parfum. I don't really need to even um, open Fragrantica because I don't even trust it anymore. Once I saw that the notes from the bottle different you know was different than the uh oh this is good i swear i remember putting this to my nose and just thinking damn this stinks back once upon a time but holy shit this is good so definitely get the pink pepper definitely get oris versus iris it's way creamier still has that lipsticky vibe really good that tolu balsam this is balsamic it's also resinous Vanilla, tonka bean, benzo, and oh shit, like this is sexy. Very sexy. Yeah. Oh, hey, what's up, Colleen? You were about to say this. Oh, don't stress out. <laughs> Am I really sideways? Holy shit. <laughs> That's hilarious, man. I think I need to uh, fix that. Hold on. Give me one second. I yeah, might have fixed it. Oh, damn, man. Well, I'm glad you said something now, but I don't think it even fixed it yet. Oh, well. Okay, cool. Well, you know what? I'll turn around for the rest of the video. How about that? We'll just do it like this. Okay, cool. So, <laughs> yeah, so Eau de Parfum. It's one of the other better ones. Let me see if it actually fixed it, man. I hate this delay. Shit. I am still sideways. Okay, let me see what I can do. One second. Rotate your phone. You can't turn your phone while recording. Okay, well, I just did it. What are you going to do? I'm probably upside down now. Let's see. Yeah, I was upside down. Okay, cool. How about that? There we go. Much better. If I tell my phone, it's okay. <laughs> oh, shit. <gasps> there you go. That's hilarious, man. Damn, I wish I knew sooner. <laughs> that's hilarious. <gasps> it's all right. This is the second time. Honestly, that's exactly why I wanted to do it again. So I can know, like, am I going to do anything wrong or not? Sheesh. Oh, well. Well, thanks for staying tuned, guys. I probably would have been like, God, this is giving me a headache. I'm out of here. Ah, oh, shit. All right, whatever. Okay. Well, back to where we were. The Eau de Parfum out of, here we go. This is the Givenchy that I got today. Uh, this doesn't include the Givenchy that I have earlier, which was the Reserve Privé. Yeah, I guess so. Entertainment. I try, okay. <laughs> but this doesn't include the Reserve Privé. So if I had to line them up so far, this is number one. Reserve Privé would be number two. The EDT Intense would be number three. The Eau de Toilette would be number four. And this would come last. Still all super sexy fragrances. Uh, more summer appropriate. The Boise is, excuse me. The Boise is the easiest to wear. It's mo the most generic of them. The sexiest of them, the EDP, the Intense. And then the EDT uh Intense, the EDT Intense, which is the 2021 formulation, is it kind of battles with Boise a little bit. Boise has that same versatility as the EDT Intense, the 2021, but this has more character. So honestly, they kind of just shat on the Boise with the new release of the EDT Intense. That's my opinion. So it actually places Boise last almost, but I know a lot of people would probably place it before the EDT, the original 2017 formula. So Reserve Privé, I have it in my bedroom. 
I'm not going to go out and get it, but that's the other fragrance. Actually, it was my fragrance of the day the other day, uh, two days ago. It's amazing. It's a really good fragrance. Guys, for those of you that are tuning in, we went over a couple of fragrances. Tuxedo, it's all recorded. Obviously, you can go back um, and watch them all. We went through a Tuxedo clone. We went through Adonis Awakens from Argos. We went through Jenny Glow. Jenny Glow did a fantastic job at going over a Joe Malone fragrance, the Myrrh and Bean. That's the only one that I actually enjoy from Joe Malone. I think Joe Malone is, uh, you know, sub-average fragrance is not really that good. But this did a really good job, 90% in the opening as far as closeness. And then the Nishane Ani, it's really damn good. I know a lot of people, honestly, I was discouraged to pick it up because a lot of people were like, oh, it's kind of Creed Aventusy. No, not at all. Not at all. It's definitely different. Way sexier than Creed Aventus, in my opinion, because I do steer more towards gourmand-like fragrances. And then the last one was a relatively new, I don't want to say it's new, probably like six, seven months that people have been talking about it, is El Haramein Detour Noir. And that's the uh, Parfums de Morley Leighton clone for under 35 bucks. It gets pretty close. It gets about 85% close. That's closer than most fragrances out right now. I don't know a single fragrance that gets even near that uh, for Leighton. And then lastly was Bruges by Perlador. So we're kind of just doing a quick summary here. And that was the Carlisle clone. It does really good. It gives you the same exact feeling. It's 80%, but it's similar, very similar um, feeling to that. Yes, Joe Malone is way too far and they fade way too fast. Okay, if I'm being honest, guys, there's a fragrance company you can literally buy their their fragrances for like six dollars and it gives me the same performance and it's from freaking old navy yeah old navy there's like little fragrances that they sell for like seven dollars don't sleep on them i use them in my bathroom but that's about the strength that i get from joe malone they have good fragrances i'm not saying that they don't but it's just no i'm sorry i'm not paying that much for that and then this is for 17 bucks from fragrancebuy.ca so if it lasts even three hours, that's already more than Joe Malone has ever given me personally. Okay. Um, Ray says, you only got your nose on the OG and the Boise. Yeah. Like I said, Ray, man, the first time that I got, I don't know if they reformulated or whatever, but it's not the same experience I had in the beginning. I remember smelling Givenchy, gentlemen, just remembering like, whoa, this is too damn much, but not anymore. I'm so glad I picked them up. Okay. So looks like we're down to the last two. And the last two are the most freaking expensive ones. I had to do it. <sighs> Zerzhov. So we got some in the big boys too. The Oh, wait. What? Could have sworn. Well, I might have to check my invoice. One of them is a big boy and the other one's a 1.7. Oh, the Starlight. So this is a part of their Shooting Stars collection. And I have the Cruz del Sewer from the Shooting Stars. And I have to. So they call it the Shooting Stars, guys, because a lot of their fragrances, believe it or not, I actually got a um it's like a raw hide or cowhide envelope with a button i was like what the hell is this did i get a fragrance or a freaking what is this so i opened this little envelope and there's this card in there and it's crazy um yeah joe malone is okay like i said their fragrances are some of them are good but yeah longevity is just crap man i'm sorry especially when you're spending over 50 bucks like anything under 50 we'll talk about it like the, the Old Navy ones that was under $10, it's all good. But no, man, I'm sorry. For me personally, a lot of people still love Joe Malone. I have friends that buy it constantly. But anyway, back to this. So their Starlight, guys, it's crazy. So I got that. It was like a raw hide or hide, some kind of hide envelope. Opened it up and inside was like this official notarized card. And I never really seen many reviewers tell us what's actually on that card. I remember watching one from Red Lessons and they tell you about it, authenticating the fragrance, but it doesn't authenticate the fragrance. It actually authenticates a piece of like metal from a meteorite. It, that's insane. And inside it was like this specific, like um, it was a piece of iron that I got in that one. Whether or not they do different pieces of metal in each fragrance, we're about to find out. That's why I wanted, I had to get another one from the Stars Collection, the Shooting Stars Collection. So if there's a shooting star or a meteorite, that's when they go, they, or they probably buy it and they notarize and authenticate that um, stone. So I was just like, this is insane. So just the fact that like their detail and stuff like that was just like, what the hell? Yeah, it was pretty interesting. Not that I care for the stone, you know, I didn't buy it for the stone. But hey, the more the merrier, you know, that definitely was like, what? So that's cool. So, all right, let's go. Let's see what's up. 
was uh, freaking. Imagine somebody asking you, "Ooh, what are you wearing?" You say something like Zerzhov. They're gonna be like, "What the fuck did you just say to me?" <laughs> so we got this sleeve right here. You take it off. That's the starlight. All right, cool. And then, I mean, man, look at that. That's crazy. Um, let's see. Damn it! Why do my comments disappear? I saw something that you said, Ray, for a second about. Okay, here we go. I see it now. Yeah, man, I spent a heavy purse, bro. Like, definitely. <laughs> for 50 bucks, I'd rather buy a decant designer. Yeah. Yeah. Man, Bath & Body Works are good. And they last about as long as Joe Malone. So, yo, speaking of Bath & Body Works, guys, if you don't... Oh, oh, I don't have it here. But I have their at-home scents in the stars. It smells like Baccarat Rouge. It's really good. All right. So, let's see what's in here. Holy smokes. Okay, so, well, this looks identical to what my Cruz del Sur 2 came in. And then when you open it, guys, God, it's just fucking sexy. Look at that. So the paper here is actually felt paper. It's not just regular paper. And then you open that sucker up and it's like, damn, look at that. Don't you just want to like, like a shot of whiskey or something, man. It looks like fine wine. And then on the sticker, it says, oh, my God, they better have a goddamn star in here. It's just a little star that falls from the sky, made in Italy. I want to see if I can get that for you guys. Yeah, something like that. I did, I did my best, guys. Maybe in the full review, okay? And then here, you can actually pick this up. And so if you want to, they didn't put one. Damn, I'm actually pissed now. <sighs> Whatever. And so you can actually... Um, set this up however you want. I like presenting them a little bit higher up so that they're sitting out like this. And then I'll tuck this underneath, obviously, so we can just, let's see what we'll do. We just bam, bam. You know what? I'm going to go and grab that, um, that stone. So you can put this like this. And then what I do is I'll just set them up like this for display. I'm actually really disappointed that I didn't get that sleeve. Let me go get it just to show you guys real quick. Be right back. So I actually tried to find Boise or uh, Reserve Privé. I can't even find that fragrance. But take a look, man. Look at that. You can tell that it's some hide. Zerge off. And then we have that button. Pop this sucker open. And here's the card. They should have had it in here. I don't know why the hell they didn't. Maybe I'll uh, see what's up. So there we go. So you can see that meteorite certification shooting stars. And then it's stamped Zerjoff and signed. And so it says, it gives you information like the region, which is Siberia, which is uh, Russia. So it fell there. And then they actually officially named it, uh, whatever, I can't read that, but country USSR gives you the coordinates, the fall date. So this actually fell in February 12, 1947. And it was ex extracted in April. And it's an iron 2B. And then here's the iron. Like, I don't know what I'm going to do with it. Maybe I'll eat it one of these days, but excuse my nasty fingers right now. Like, what do you do with this? <laughs> but that is so damn cool. So cool. Just the fact that I have like, I guess a piece of history or something, but yeah, no, definitely, definitely something not right here with this one. So I'm either going to contact Zerjoff or Joe Machat because I should have had one. This is a part of the Shooting Stars collection. So I think so. I'll double check and we'll get back with that. But let's see what's up. Let's see what's up with the fragrance notes and tell you guys, is this even worth that 300 bucks or whatever the hell it was called? Uh, Shooting Stars, it's called Starlight. Zerjoff Starlight, let's go. So this will be the first time. So it's warm, spicy, oops, 
uh, warm, spicy, cinnamon, almond, amber, aromatic, citrus. So let's see what's up. Zerjoff. Yeah, they definitely look sexy as hell. Yeah, I know. It's hard. You wouldn't know where the hell to put this for real. Starlight. So this one, I feel like kind of flies under the radar. Put it up. <laughs> Ray said I should uh, put it on my forehead like Lil Uzi Vert. Definitely. Um, good idea, though. I'm definitely going to hit them up. That's not cool. Because I should have had some. Look at me just throwing it around, too. As if I care about it. Well, let's see. Okay, here we go. Well, maybe we want to see the sprayer. Damn. Holy shit. Right off the bat, I smell dates. Like dates, like the actual thing. But then citrus starts coming really fast. That smells so damn good. This smells really natural. That's what I love about Zerjoff, man. Same thing with that Cruz del Sur. Just like that freaking mango. Oh, this is so good. This is edible. And it has that almond. It smells better than almond extract. If you guys ever smelled almond extract, kind of has like a cherry vibe. This is cleaner than that. Cloves are realistic, but they're not strong. Perfectly blended fragrance. Holy shit, I'm so glad I picked that one up. I'll save it for the full review. But damn, that's a good one. I don't know why I don't really hear too much about it. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I'll stick to. I'll just tell them, yo, it's fake. You guys told me I'm fake. <laughs> no, but definitely it's not a fake. I'll see what they can do. Or I'll actually, I don't know if this is actually part of the Shooting Stars collection. I think I just had the wrong idea, man. I honestly think I had the wrong idea. Because it's just Starlight. So maybe I assumed that it was a part of the Shooting Star collection. I, I honestly think that's what it is. Because even when I opened it up here, it doesn't say that it's a part of the Shooting Stars collection in the description for Fragrantica either. So like Cruz del Sur too, if I open that bad boy up, we'll see. We'll see. I'm going to check it out and see what it's supposed to come with. And if it doesn't, if it is supposed to come with that, you know, your boy is not going to stay quiet for goddamn sure. Okay. Um, last one, guys. 100 ml worthy. You already know. Well, you might not know, but you know this fragrance for the most part. This is Naxos, the best, one of the best, one of the most duplicated, tried to duplicate fragrances that, um, no, they don't come with an authenticity card. Um, that's the thing is like you, you, you would think, so based off of the reviewers that I saw, they get an authenticity card. No, they don't. I've never gotten one for, uh, what's it called? The only authenticity card was for that stone and they never showed the stone ever i've never seen a reviewer post it so when i got i was like straight up like shocked i was like what the hell is this i was very shocked so no they don't come with the authenticity card damn man cloves and cinnamon and and um bergamot still there kind of clove cinnamon this is i'm talking about starlight very good clove. It's not overpowered because I know sometimes clove is like, yeah. But it's clove, cinnamon, and um, what the hell is the note I'm looking for? Cardamom. And a little bit of brightness. So damn good. But it's good quality because you know a lot of fragrances have that blend. But their blend is really good because it's clean. It's not um, done in the wrong concentrations. Yeah, I don't think that's a Shooting Stars collection, but because they all look the same. Here we go. That's Naxos. This is the big boy. So and here we go. The felt. Oh, God. This is so sexy. This is the frosted one. Let's take a look at that. And they had the big one on special. There's only a couple, like $60 more for the big one compared to the small one. Uh, but the other ones are significantly different, like $150 more. That's too much. 1861 Naxos. Let's see. Does this come with anything underneath? Hell no. No, these, you cannot imitate or replicate these, the presentation on these, Ray. Um, definitely can't. All right, let's see what this smells like. Uh, we all know what Naxo smells like, but if you don't, let's introduce you to it. It's one of the sexiest 
tobacco fragrances. Sweet vanilla, honey, tobacco, lavender. So we got lavender, bergamot, lemon, honey, cinnamon, cashmere, and jasmine, sambic, uh, tobacco, and tonka and vanilla at the base. Let's go. Forget that freaking Terry Mugler, whatever, pure Havan. Yes. So I'm not going to lie. It opened more citrus heavy than I ever thought it would. Or remember, and the honey. Okay, so pure Havan, I hate to admit, kills it for me with the honey. The honey is overdone. But this honey is is so damn real. That's what I love about Zerjoff. Every goddamn note in their fragrance is like you're actually smelling that actual note. Lavender, imagine smelling the lavender uh, herb. The honey, you're smelling real honey. You're not smelling a synthetic honey. Cinnamon is there, but it's not really that strong. The jasmine is there. I can definitely smell jasmine. It's really nice and clean. It's a white floral type fragrance. And then the tobacco is starting to amplify. Very damn good. I'm not disappointed in these two purchases at all. Starlight is worthy of a, a 100 ml. I don't think they actually sell that one in 100 ml. Otherwise, I would um, get a backup. They could try to fake it, but it wouldn't be as good. Oh, yeah, 100%. Well, yeah, bro. Like, just take a look at the bottle. So, not only that, like the Zerjoff engraving, Naxos 1861, there is zero question when it comes to authenticity for Joma Shop. But let's see. Okay, let's match it. 09522N. 09522N. It looks everything like Naxos should. You know, everything is normal. Everything is right. And then, I mean, even the fakes, they're not going to fake a detail like this. Let's see. Can you guys see that? And they kind of use that like it's almost like a watermark. They do that on purpose because, I mean, I don't know, though. Our moff is on some crazy shit. <laughs> you guys know our moff don't play. But, yeah. Yeah, you would assume you know but yeah definitely you would think that but honestly um ray their their presentation along with the felt lining here like you can't i don't think this is easy to mimic at all this is straight up felt so all right that's it and even if they tried to mimic it the cost would probably be greater than what it's worth so you notice that this one didn't come with the plaque, and that's what's making me believe that that is actually from the Shooting Stars collection. So I'll find out. Otherwise, this completes the haul. I have to go and find my... So you guys, look at the box that it came in. This thing is freaking huge. <laughs> oh, shit. But yeah, I have to go and find my Reserve Privé. I've got too many fragrances that I'm just throwing around at this point. So thanks, guys, for watching. I love you all. And I hope you enjoyed this unboxing with me and expect to see all of these in the channel. I've got plenty more. Honestly, I think I'm going to stop buying for a little while just because I'm like at this point I have enough content for another year. So not to brag, I'm being honest. So, but anyway, Ray, thank you. I'm glad you were able to make it for the duration of the video. Thank you for everyone else who tuned in. Colleen, thank you as well. And yeah, Vargas, thank you too. Much love for you as well, brother. So, peace out, guys. Have a great night. If I can end this, we'll see. Yep, I can. See you guys.